Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now talk about the fourth and the last type of animal tissue that is nervous tissue. So, so far what did we see? We saw epithelial tissue which forms covering of all the body organs and cavities and protect them. Next was, uh, we, sp uh, next we spoke about uh, connective tissue. So, connective tissue connects different parts of the body and forms the entire skeleton. Then was muscular tissue which helps in the movements of different body parts. Now a very important tissue that is nervous tissue. Let us see what it is. So this is the main component which constitutes the nervous system. What comes to your mind whenever you think of nervous system? Whenever we talk about nervous system, we think of brain, nerves, spinal cord. And what do they do? What does our brain do? Now any movement which we do, for example, you see a cup of hot coffee. So what do you do? If you want to drink it, you fetch the cup of coffee and drink it. So there is muscular tissue involved in fetching the cup of coffee. But what tells you that you want that cup of coffee? It is something in your brain which tells you that, okay, I want to have coffee. I want that cup of coffee. Because suppose even if that cup of coffee is lying there, but if you don't want to have coffee, then you will not make any movements. Right? So there is something, there is an organ which actually controls everything inside your body. So brain is that organ which tells all other parts of the body what to do and when to do. Correct? Okay. So basically talking about nervous system. So when we talk about nervous system, it basically consists of three main parts. Brain spinal cord and nerves so here in this picture you can see this is the brain and I'm, I'm talking about human beings right now there are so many types of nerves present in, in our body because that whatever information brain wants to send that should be sent to all different parts of the body so for that you need nerves and what is spinal cord spinal cord is nothing but it forms the backbone of your body we will talk about them in detail one by one. So let us start with the speciality of nervous tissue. I mean, why is the nervous tissue, how is it different from all other types of tissue? Because now they are doing something very different, right? They are manipulating things. It is, it is doing the job of thinking. So cells of the nervous tissue are highly specialized to respond to stimuli and then transmitting the stimulus very rapidly from one place to another within the body. Now what is stimuli here? So this is a new term. What do I mean by stimulus? So stimulus is singular and stimuli is plural. So let us see what it is. It is an event that evokes a specific functional reaction in an organ or tissue. For example, if by mistake you put your finger near a hot flame, what happens? What happens? You feel hot, right? And you immediately take your finger back. So what was the event? The event was that hot flame. And what was your reaction? You immediately took your hand back. So that movement was the, was the reaction. So here, what is reaction? Reaction is the taking back of your hand. And what is the event that made you do this reaction? The hot flame. So that hot flame is the stimulus. Right? So anything that evokes a reaction, a very fast reaction in any part of the body, in an organ or a tissue, that is known as stimulus. Now, this, in the nervous tissue, the cells are very, very specialized to respond to stimuli. As soon as there is something which needs a reaction, the cells will recognize those stimuli and they will respond accordingly. So, when you touch something very cold, again you feel extremely cold and move your, take your back, hand back. So here also the same thing, when you touch a cup of hot coffee or let us suppose you see somebody you know, suppose you meet your teacher suddenly in the market, what happens? As soon as you see your teacher, a smile comes on your face or you greet her saying, hello ma'am, hi, where are you going or how are you? 
right? So some reaction comes on your face. Like suppose if you are seeing a stranger, you will not feel like smiling, you will not feel like talking. It's like that. But if you see somebody you know, a sudden reaction happens. You suddenly start talking to that person. So it is. this is nothing but reacting to stimuli. Similarly, suppose if something good happens to you, if you score really, really good in your exam, you are so happy. So that happiness is because of a stimulus. And what is the stimulus? Your result. Correct? So all these kind of reactions, all those things come under your nervous system. Now the question is, what constitutes the nervous tissue? What is the nervous tissue made up of? The cells of the nervous tissue are called nerve cells or neurons. They are more popularly known as neurons. Neurons are nothing but the cells which form nervous tissue. Now, how does a neuron look like? So, let us look at the structure of neuron because once we know the structure of neuron, only then we will know how it functions, how it actually reacts to stimuli. Now, the entire structure of neuron can be broadly divided into two parts, cell body and axon. So, this is how it looks like. So this is the cell body, this entire structure. This entire structure is the cell body and this entire part is axon. So this is broadly the two parts of the, this is, and this is how the neuron looks like. Now when I say cell body, it, cell body constitutes of all the cell organelles and the axon consists of some special things which are not present in all the cells. So we will see here quickly. So the three parts here we will divide. Cyton. Cyton is another name for cell body. Cell body is also known as cyton. It, it has a well-defined nucleus. So here you can see the well-defined nucleus. Cytoplasm with measles, granules and neurofibrils. So this is the cytoplasm. This entire fluid-like thing present here that is cytoplasm and inside the cytoplasm you, we find fiber-like structures called neurofibrils and small granules which are known as measles granules. So what are the measles granules? As I say, these are small granules present in the cytoplasm. They help in synthesis and release of proteins because they consist of free ribosomes and as we all know ribosomes are the site for protein synthesis. So these measles granules also help in protein synthesis. Neurofibrils, these are thin fiber like structures or thread like structures which runs through the cytoplasm and also extend into axon and dendrite. So here you have axon. So thin here like structures which are present even in dendrites and axons. We will see what is dendrite and what is axon. The next part is dendrite. Now often dendrite is not considered as a separate structure. Sometimes dendrites are also included in the cell body. But anyways, what are cell dendrites? They are short thread-like structures arising from cyton. So from the cell body only there is some extension of short hair-like structures. They are called dendrites. What is their function? They receive impulses from outside and pass to the cyton. So they will receive signals from outside then they will pass it to the cyton, that is to the cell body. So the dendrites are basically the receivers. And the last one is axon. It is a long thread-like structure arising from cyton. So basically dendrite and axon, both are the same thing. Both are extension of the cytoplasm. It is just that dendrite are short extensions and axon is a very long thread-like structure. It is quite long when compared to dendrite. Now, axon has fibrous branches at their endings called axon endings. So here you can see these endings, fibrous branching structures. This is called nerve endings or axon endings. Both are the same thing. Axon endings of one neuron are closely placed on cyton of other neuron. So now, how is the nervous tissue formed? It is formed by not only by one such neuron, many such neurons. So how are the neurons connected? The nerve ending of one neuron is connected to the cyton of other neuron. Again, the nerve ending of the second neuron is connected to the cyton of the third neuron. So that is how they are connected. So basically, it, it will be something like this. Let us suppose this is one neuron. So it, the nerve ending of this neuron will be connected 
to the cytoplasm or to the cell body of the next neuron. Again, the nerve ending of this next neuron will be connected to the cyto cyton of the third neuron and so on. This is how they are all connected. Correct? So now what is the purpose of dendrite? Dendrite will receive the signals from outside, it will send it to the cell body. From the cell body, it will get transmitted to the axon and from axon again, it will get transmitted to the next neuron and so on. That is how it will pass on from one neuron to other. So we will see that also in detail quickly. So axon conducts impulses away from the cyton. So this information which came here in the cyton, axon takes it away in this direction. So neurons constitute the nervous system. So basic structural and functional unit of the nervous system. When we are talking about the nervous system as a whole. So the basic thing is neuron. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.